While the coronavirus is thought to spread mainly from person to person, experts say it can spread when you touch a contaminated surface. But just how long can COVID-19 survive on a tabletop or your packages delivered to your door? CBSN's LA's Jasmine Veal spoke with Dr. Daisy Dodd to find out. All right, so how does COVID-19 compare to the other infectious diseases first off that you've studied and dealt with? Yes, the, we actually have a report that came out, the New England Journal. Uh, researchers have studied uh, in terms of how long it might remain in surfaces. Uh, we do know that in an aerosol environment, uh, the particles of the virus might stay about three hours. If we're talking about copper, it might stay about four hours. In things like cardboards and uh, plastic, it might stay two to three days. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we keep emphasizing the importance of washing hands. Yeah, so talk more about this then, those harder surfaces. Let's say the pump at the gas station versus an envelope arriving in our mailboxes. Uh, yes, actually in paper it seems to last a little less, that it might be on metal. Metal, we know that the virus might be present for a few days. Uh, the truth of the matter is that we don't know, however, uh, how much or how many germs might be there that you need to be able to be infected. So that if you went to the pump, if you receive a box at home, once you handle such a thing, you are to wash your hands. One of the things that we're very concerned about, particularly if you're using the toilet in handles of the door, uh, the germ might remain on that surface, uh, as we said, maybe for three or four days. So that if you are at home cleaning those surfaces often, it will be extremely important, particularly if you have an individual that might be sick. Yeah, great advice. Uh, and even the, let's say, the groceries you pick up at the, at the store, we, should we be wiping down all those packages? Yes, um, not only the groceries, the plastic itself, but one of the concerns now that we're ordering uh, from our favorite restaurant, they're still providing uh, some delivery. Uh, one of the questions that I have for patients, doctor, will that box, let's say you get a pizza, uh, will that box be contaminated? And potentially the answer is yes. So that if you pick up your pizza, uh, you perhaps put it, you wash your hands, took it from the person, wash your hands, uh, then go ahead and take the pizza out, put it on your plate. So once again, washing those hands and sterilizing surfaces as much as we can, very, very important. Okay, what about people wearing the gloves now out to those grocery stores? Is that necessary? Does that actually help? You know, I'm actually a little wary uh, about wearing gloves and masks only because it gives you a sense of comfort, a sense of protection that might not necessarily be there. Uh, you might very well be wearing those gloves, you're t touching the card, you're touching uh, a particular surface, you open the door, and then with those uh, contaminated gloves, you go ahead and you touch your eyes, you touch your nose, you touch your mouth, bingo, you're already contaminated yourself. So I think it gives you a certain degree of comfort that might not necessarily be there. What I would much rather have people do, to be honest, is to stay home. Uh, if you do have to go to the store, uh, designate the one person, perhaps uh, somebody who is not elderly, uh, somebody who might not have uh, underlying medical problems, and that person might be able to do the grocery shopping. I know that there's many uh, churches and individuals in the community that are actually volunteering to be able to do that. If you are particularly a high-risk individual, uh, we're getting a lot of mails. Uh, now people are at, uh, ordering things on the mail. You got that box, you open your box, wash your hands, take items out, just go ahead and get rid of the box, throw it in the garbage can. Wow, and it all goes back to also just washing your hands and don't touch your face. Uh, lastly, doctor, how does COVID-19 compare again, to the other infectious diseases that you've come across? Well, we know that the, the most particular thing about, uh, we call it SARS-2 or COVID-19, uh, is how contagious it is. 
Uh, we're making a lot of comparisons. We actually had SARS-1 or Corona-1, if you want to call it that, uh, in the beginning of the century, back in 2003 and thereabouts. And we were able to control uh, the spread of the disease, although we did lose quite a few people. There were at least 14,000 people that died in the United States. But we were able to control it because it was not as contagious. Uh, it wasn't as much of a transmission person to person remaining in surfaces as it is now. So in comparison, uh, COVID-19 is much more contagious. Uh, the other comparison is the fact that with COVID-19, there is a number of individuals that might be infected and not realize it. So, you know, you might have the germ, but you actually do not have any symptoms, and yet you're able to give it to another individual. Going back to the fact that if we stay at home uh, in a small, you know, with your family and try even within your house, washing your hands, if you have an indiv individual that is sick or that he has been recognized as having the infection, if you have the capacity of keeping that person in a room uh, with a bathroom uh, to themselves, that would be wonderful. Uh, not everybody is able to do that. In which case, uh, the bathroom, when we finish using the bathroom, washing your hands, uh, cleaning the handle of the door, uh, cleaning the, uh, the handle of the toilet, so that the next person that comes about might not necessarily contaminate themselves. Because if you touch the surface that's 